Alex here again with another short tutorial video where we'll be going over load cases and combinations and how these can either be automatically created based on a standard or how they can be created customly by the user. So to start off, we have a model of this floor. A bunch of these joists are put together and we will be creating load combinations. Uh, for this video, we're going to create the load combinations based on a standard. So right now I already have a model created, so I'm going to go up to my model name right click on it and go to general data here you can see I have my model name created and over here we have the classification of load cases and combinations this is where you can select the standard you would like to create your load combinations for as you can see we have a long list of standards you can choose from from the AISC to the ACI the IBC and with the NDS for now we're going to stick with the ASC 716 and we're going to have our load combinations created automatically. We'll click OK. Now we'll create our first load case by going up to load, edit load cases and combinations and going to new load case. Here we have our dead load and we're just going to name this simply dead load. And now we have our dead load case created, our action category is set to dead, and you can see that our self weight is active. This load case will be the only load case with the self weight activated. You can see a negative one factor is applied in the Z direction. We can go down to this button and create a new load case. This one will be our live load. And we'll set our action category to live and not activate our self weight. The next one we will create is our wind load. And we'll set our action category to wind. Easy enough. Next load case will be our snow load. And like you might guess, we'll set our action category to snow. The next tab is our actions. And as you can see, our actions are categorized from our action categories. These action categories are taken straight from the ASC7 and can either be applied simultaneously or alternatively. For now we're just going to leave these settings as default. We'll go into our combination expressions where you can see from section 2.3 the ASC LRFD. This is the combinations that are provided and you can see we have our ASD combinations from section 2.4. If you would like more information on what this entails and what kind of factors are being applied to your loading, you can click on this info about design situation button where you can see all of the factors that are applied to each of our load cases and what that looks like from the ASC7, which is pretty convenient. The next tab is our action combinations tab. Here is where the load cases are set up for either LRFD or ASD combinations. You can click on the small I button as well and get an overview of what the ASC provides for factors and you can go through each of your action combinations if you would like. The next tab we'll be going into is our load combinations tab. The load combinations tab is where each combination of your load cases with factors are applied and automatically generated from the standard. These are categorized based on design methods from the combination expressions tab. So if you want to get an idea of what the factors are, you can go back to those tabs and click on the more info button. Now we'll go into our result combinations tab and this is where the result combinations from your load combinations are created. These result combinations are envelope solutions that show them that will take all of your load combinations and pick the best case scenario and worst case scenario from those load combinations based on LRFD and ASD. So now moving on to our structure, we would like to apply a member loads to the structure. Now you're probably wondering how we're going to do that without surfaces. Well, I'm going to show you how to create a custom button that will allow you to customize all of the buttons up in your toolbar. To do this, all you have to do is right click anywhere in the space up here and go to customize. Once you're in the customize dialog box, we'll go down to tools. And the tool we want to use today is called generate member loads from area loads via plane. This is how we will generate our member loads without having to create a surface between our members. The surface practically would be either the steel decking or concrete slab you would be using in your structure. 
So we're going to take this tool, we're going to left click and drag, and we're going to place it up here next to our other loads. We'll close out the customized dialog box. And now you can see that we have our tool button up here for generate member loads from area loads via plane. So we'll click on this. And as you can see, it's asking me which load combination I would like to apply it to. We're going to leave dead load alone and not apply any loading to that. So the load case we would like to apply to, it will be our live load. We'll click on live load. And now you can see that the dialog box for converting area loads to member loads via planes is opened. And we want to apply this load perpendicular to the Z plane. We'll keep it in the local X, Y, and Z. And the distribution type is going to be combined. All of these other settings are perfect for what we need. We'll keep it uniform. And the magnitude we will apply will be 0.4 KSF. Now down in this area, we can select the corner nodes we would like so we can def tell the program what the area of our loading will look like. We can click on this button right here, which will allow us to graphically select this area within the program. I'll just go over the perimeter of our, of our structure. And as you can see, the perimeter of our structure was selected and we can click OK. Now down here, if you want to remove any structures, you can do this just by selecting or typing in single members. Or you can deselect any members that are parallel to the member you would select with this tool down here. For now, we're not going to use that. We're going to click OK. And now you can see the details of our loading and we'll click OK. Now you can see the loading that was applied to our structure. Right now it's displayed as a uniform load, area load around it. But if you want to see what the uniform loading on each member would look like, you can right click on your load and you can click display separately. As you can see, the loading is uniform across all of our members and you can get a good idea of what that will look like on your structure. For now, we're keeping it uniform. For our wind loading, we're just going to add some area loads along with our snow load. Now as you can see, you can scroll through each of your loads by just using the arrows up here next to your load cases and load combinations drop down window. And now we can calculate all of our results. And as you can see, we have our global deformations displayed. Now if we want to view the moments in all of our members, we'll instantly get a moment diagram for them graphically. Now that we've gained all the results, so to recap in this video, I showed how to apply load cases and load combinations and how to generate them automatically based on the standard. The results, we have our moment on each of our members along we can show our shear with our global deformations. And if you'd like, you can go through each of your load combinations up here. And you can see that in the graphical window, the results change based on the combination. And we can also look at our result combinations and you can see the minimum deformation you will see and the maximum deformations within your structure. If you'd like to just show the minimum or maximum, you can do this by expanding this result combinations tree down here. So I hope this video was helpful. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you and go over quickly how to create your own custom load combination and save them as a template for them to be used within all of the projects you will be doing and modeling. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.